Fellow countrymen, after deep soul searching, I have come to the profound realization that our nation is pleading for change. The youthful generation of this country have led the way into the light. We owe them a huge debt of gratitude. For a long time, our nation has been plagued with massive corruption, plunder of state resources, wasteful expenditure, eroded ethics in public and private sector, negative ethnicity, desecration of places of worship, among others. I feel your pain. I want a better Kenya too. My children want a better Kenya too. My wife Rachel has told me stories and dreams of us falling in love again in a new country called Kenya. For this reason, I have decided to lead the way. Fellow countrymen, before I declare the raft of measures to be undertaken by my government in the pursuit of a better tomorrow, I want to remember the heroes who have lost their lives in this struggle. I condole with your families. I cannot pretend to know how you are feeling, but I want you to know that I am truly sorry. I may not be able to restore the lives of your dear departed, but I have made a committed resolve to remember them as heroes of Kenya and confer state honors upon them as is my power under the constitution. Be assured that the government of Kenya shall bear the cost of a state burial for each of them and the families will also be compensated accordingly. Ladies and gentlemen, at a moment like this, we must make a decision to move forward or to look backwards. It is written in the story of a prolific writer, Goro Wakamao, a true son of this land, that we should never cry when the sun goes down, for the tears will not let us see the stars. As we look forward, I charge all of you to walk with me in this journey and be my accountability partners as I serve you as your president. Accordingly, I have made the following reforms to my government effective immediately. One, by the power delegated to me by the people of Kenya under Article 152 of the Constitution, I hereby dismiss all cabinet secretaries serving in my government. They shall cease to hold office forthwith. I will appoint a new cabinet within 14 days to help me in the priority business of our country. Two. Further to the foregoing, I shall within seven days appoint a non-partisan multi-sector committee to vet all public officers serving in senior positions in the executive to determine their suitability to continue to hold office and to draw salaries from the national wallet. I shall conduct this radical surgery to root out all officers that have normalized corruption, glorified incompetence, and made a mockery of public service. This shall apply to all principal secretaries, head of parastatals, presidential advisors, state house staff, among others. As a leader of the Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition of Parties, I have summoned a parliamentary group meeting on Wednesday, 3rd of July, to discuss a reorganization of our parliamentary leadership in a manner that reflects the aspirations of the people of Kenya. I hope that upon resumption of parliament, the first order of business should be to constitute the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission to facilitate democratic processes that may ensue. Ladies and gentlemen, it is important that we appreciate the fact that our constitution is not perfect. It requires serious reform to achieve a higher level of accountability and good governance. For example, I find it obnoxious that Article 104 requires Parliament to make a law that prescribes the process of recall of a member of Parliament. This is something that we must revisit. Upon constitution of the IABC, we shall propose a referendum process to re-examine the Constitution for it to reflect our national realities and aspirations as a people. 
I urge you, my fellow countrymen, to reason with me on practical steps that can be taken in the pursuit of shared prosperity. To spur economic growth in our motherland, I have made the following executive orders. One, I am this evening instructing the governor of Central Bank to within 21 days develop a mechanism where small, medium enterprises, SMEs, can borrow business loans from banks at a special interest rate of 8% to 10%, which will enable business expansion and job creation for our youth. I am this evening instructing the Director General of the Energy Petroleum Regulatory Authority, EPRA, to immediately prioritize issuance of licenses to any person who wants to generate affordable electricity for Kenyans. The authority should develop comprehensive regulations to open up the energy market for investment. This will help lower the cost of manufacturing and spark growth in the manufacturing sector, thus creating jobs for our youth. Fellow countrymen, following two weeks of protest by the Kenyan people, it is worth noting that there are police officers that conducted themselves in a manner that betrays their oath, violates the Constitution, the Police Service Act, and the police standing orders. I therefore charge the Independent Police Oversight Authority to speed up investigations into such cases for immediate action. In the intervening period, I have accepted the resignation of the Inspector General, Mr. Jafet Koome, who has written to me citing personal reasons. The nation is grateful to his service. I have forthwith recalled the Deputy Inspector General Nur Gabo, who is on a UN mission in Haiti to report back to office and act as Inspector General until a substantive office holder is appointed. In the coming weeks, I will announce more measures to be undertaken by my government in furtherance of radical reforms that are in pursuit of our shared prosperity. Thank you, good people. I won't be taking any questions today. Asan-san.